Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. I have a long video for you today. It's really long. We're going to do a lot of things. We're going to make some mistakes and without further ado, shall we? Because we're already, time's already wasting. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the circle. So this is the product that I'm going to be using today. And this is where am I looking? The Chunky Birthday Die. The Chunky Birthday Die is a, well, it was a request from a customer at Simon Says Stamps. Sometimes we get requests because someone said to me, Kathy, you have this really cute little happy chunky die. See that right there? And they said it sure would be neat if there was a matching birthday. So that is what I did. And I'll show you, I'll show you. This is the size of birthday, right? And this is the size of happy. And yes, I did design them to work together. So you can stack these for a card front to make an awesome happy birthday card. So that's the key to this piece. Something, wait, how, how's it, how does it go? Something old, something new. I don't have anything borrowed and I'm not using anything blue, but that's okay. Cause let's take a look at other things I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using my brayer today because this is a tool that I have committed to using more of in the new year and it's pretty awesome. I'm also going to be using some Distress Oxides. I have worn lipstick and I have festive berries, spiced marmalade. Let's slide these. Oh, flip you upside down <laughs> for my OCD friends in the audience. Twisted Citron. And what I'm going to do is use my gel press to create a background. Here it is. And this is another tool that I'm just, you know, I want to use more. I want to do more with this because everything you do with this thing is going to look different every time you do it. So got the gel press, got this die. And the reason I'm going to use it is to create a funky background that I can die cut, fill in happy birthday all the way down. It's going to be beautiful. I'm going to be using some of this Tim Holtz Distress White Heavy Stock to do my, my little ink transfer and brayering on. So let's get set up and proceed. Let's get our gel press out here. I also need a piece of scratch paper and that is for uh, the brayer because I'm gonna be putting stuff on and putting stuff off and we're gonna start with the Distress Oxide and I am gonna kind of come in from the side. So let's grab the brayer. I think this is such a fun tool and I hope to learn a lot more about it by doing things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go on the edge here. And I think you do have to kind of go in this direction because you want to, you want to get it covered to the best of your ability. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. Cause what I'm going to do here is just lay this down in rainbow order across the space to create this this background so we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens okay all I'm gonna do keeping in mind that my cardstock you know is about this big right so I want to make sure that I get a decent amount and then I'm just gonna go light like that right and I'm gonna rub this off and actually if I had done this little rub off on a better color I probably would have something really interesting also but it's just scratch paper so Next, we're going to take this and do the same. Get that lighter color. And I'm keeping it limited to just, you know, I don't know, about two inches because I don't want to cover the whole brayer because I want to try to keep it in order as I go across, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's just do that area like that. Just back and forth a few times. Oh my gosh, there's a hair in there. Are you kidding me? Where's my, uh, where's my tweezers? We don't, we don't want my hair on this project. <laughs> At least I sure don't. Okay. I'm going to get this guy off and I'm going to move on to the spiced marmalade. And again, just go right onto the guy here. There's more hair. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to need to wear a hairnet uh, for crafting in the future. Wouldn't that be funny? Okay. Boop. Boop. So you can even boop even boop when you're here. Okay, look at that. Getting that on too. All right. Mm, look at that. Such a pretty color. And I think the thing is too, you can be a little messy, a little haphazard. It doesn't have to be perfectly placed because this sure isn't. 
And then, do I still have hair there? You know what, we're gonna have to live with it. Uh, gel presses pick up everything. Okay, and let's go like that. And then I really wanna rub this off because I wanna get that good twisted citron. And I might put some, I might put some water on this. Not sure, I haven't decided yet. I wanna load up the twisted citron here. And now I'm gonna lay down my twisted citron like that. And then I'll just kind of come up a little bit. And that's it. See that? Now here's the question. Do I want to sprinkle on some drops of water? Put a little in my hand and just let a few droplets go onto the gel press. Maybe just like that. Maybe like that. Maybe like that. Okay. Let's take this down. I want more green. So I'm just going to press this down and we begin transferring. Oh, look at that coming out the edges. I always keep pressure with one hand, right? And then you can do the other hand, but this does transfer pretty, pretty, pretty easily. And I have a feeling though. I don't know this for fact, so don't quote me. I think gel presses really do season and get different as we go, because right now I haven't used it a whole lot. And so here's what we're going to get. Let's lift it up and look. Oh, look at that. Now that, that's kind of cool, right? I mean, it looks totally different than I thought it would. Wow. Barely even see the green. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to layer in some more color in the places that I want them. So. We're going to do that next. Orange. I'm going to go ahead and now I am just going to go right here on the center. All right. I'm just going to go like this and I'm just going to, well, I'm trying to do this in the same place that it's going to show up, right? Fading it up a little, fading it down, right? And I want to get a little more of the green. Get that going like that. And just bring that up. Now I'm not going to wet it down this time. This time, I'm just going to go like that and transfer this. So I think what's kind of cool about these gel presses is you can just keep doing things like this and see what they look like. If this looks bad, I guess we're about to find out. Let's see. Ooh, see how it got deeper and I got more of my green at the bottom? That's kind of cool. Okay, I like that. I actually think this is really pretty. I may add a little more pink at the top. Warm lipstick, yeah, I think I'll do that like this. But once this is done, you know, I have a beautiful pattern or I have a beautiful level of color, right? Let's get that going there like that for the back. And I'll just lightly go to kind of fade that down, okay? Let's go again and press. And I like that I did a little water in the beginning, but less as I go because you get a little bit of that texture. Oh, that's pretty. And I like the striations. Again, they're all one of a kind, right? This is not going to look the same the next time I do it. So I think we have our background ready to go. So before I die cut, I'm just going to trim this down a little bit so that it easily fits through my die cut machine. Cut that panel off. I think rather than go top to bottom, I think it would look cool to have it be, you know, like that going in and going in. So what you're going to get here, right? Oh, there's more hair. I'm falling apart. What you're going to get here is this nice blended fill of and actually I could do more of an offset, but I, you know, I could, it doesn't, it's gonna, but no, cause I want it to line up perfectly. Well, you know, mostly perfectly. So this can get taped down just so it doesn't shift. I have my die cut machine off camera because it's, it's, it's over my shoulder over there, uh, because it's heavy and it's big and it's plugged in, but I'm going to run it through my Gemini junior because that thing will cut these beautifully, but I need to be very careful just to kind of preserve. Do I want a little more of that yellow? We're just going to tape this down so it doesn't shift on the plates. And then I'm going to get this ready for cutting, but I want to keep 
the fills because that's the point of this having this pretty uh this pretty background it's going to fill my white die cuts which i have to make more of these too because as it stands right now i only have happy and birthday and i accidentally uh tossed the fills so i gotta i gotta do a bunch of die cutting so let's get all the pieces die cut and then we can start to fill so run that through okay now here's where the uh, sticky tool is going to come in handy because I want these to kind of stay in the right place, but if they don't, it's fine. I am just looking for fills. That's it. I don't want the outlines on these. Oh, pop you down. Okay. But the beautiful thing about this is, oh, that tore a little, is I have two things to work with. So I have fills and I also have, oh, yeah outlines in the pretty rainbow. So I could actually get more cards out of this than I have initially slated. Oh, come on now. I guess I'm, I guess I'm, I'm going all in because I have the rainbow outline of that. And I have the rainbow outline of that, even though all I want for right now are the fills and those are my fills. Now, actually it's not very dramatic. That's actually a lot more subtle than I thought it was going to be. So again, live and learn. All right, let's go do more die cutting. So the next thing I want to do, I've got these cut out. I'm going to take my Elmer's spray adhesive. I have a big industrial size bottle and I spray in a box just off to the side here. I'm going to put in, let's see here. I'm going to put in layer number one of birthday, not doing any of the insides yet because I'm not going to worry about those just yet, even though I have to still cut more out. And I'm not going to cut out any more of these because I'm just going to start with one layer. I find that when you're piecing stuff in, it's easier to do that way. So let's get it in. I'm going to turn this to the side because it's just a little easier for me to visualize. I'm going to place, kind of place this down. And I think that looks good. These have a nice framing chunky outline. Isn't that nice? Do I have a block here somewhere? And I'll go ahead and do the happy center in the first letter and then I'm pretty sure the rest of it's gonna look just fine. Oh love those chunky chunky shadows. So great. Okay pressing that down pressing that down Oh, <laughs> and now I can start piecing this in. But for that, I am going to grab some liquid glue because I think liquid glue is nice for this. Plus, it's easier to control the flow. And so now that I know these are pressed now, another thing I do sometimes, I take my Teflon bone folder and I send things flying. Take my Teflon bone folder and uh, you can use it to, you know, press in something that you've glued down on the back side like that. So look at that. Now I know that's really good to go and I'll do it on there too. Now we're good. So I'm going to do the happy here on camera because I think you'll, I think you'll get, you'll get, the, you'll get the gist. So for the letters that are, you know, there's, there's no centers. This is easy peasy. Uh, Zach Parisi. Thank you. That's a hockey player. And that's my, that's my new catch saying. So but for the ones with the centers, you do want to kind of say, all right, I'm just going to stick to the outside, right? Because I know there's a fill coming in here. And the thing is, I am going to be putting uh, centers, white centers in here too. So I don't have to be worried that, you know, this isn't going to work. Uh, and what I actually meant to say was this, when I die cut the second and third happy, I might do two, I might do three. What's going to happen is it will it will further hold these into place. So helpful is a sticky pick me up tool. Let's move this into camera here, and let's just start. You can oh, mine. Okay, mine has virtually no sticks. So let's just uh, let's pretend like that didn't happen. I need a new one, but sometimes they're hard to get. So all you're going to do is layer in each one. And what is so great about it is. Get that beautiful framing outline with the white. Just want to press, right? Give that a good press. Slide that, pick that up. And again, 
press. It's a very subtle rainbow, but I still think this is gorgeous. And again, the Braird backgrounds, right? Who knew? Oh, I don't know. If you had told me I would be using a Braird even a year ago, I might have laughed you out of the craft slash dining room. Maybe not. Maybe I would have said, yeah, I probably will. Okay, so that's done. Number one, bring that up a little closer. Well, it's not completely done because I have to add the centers and I will do that. But first, I'm going to let that adhere again, press. It's another reason I like having a block is you can, you know, you can use them to really press things in. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in birthday in the same manner. And then we're going to get ready to pop in the centers and the extra layers. So now I've got the centers also done and that too, these are a little, a little ticky tack to see, but I can just go ahead and just, just do tiny little bits around the edge like that and place in each of the outlined centers of the white. So I'm going to work my way through. Oh, actually like these are so small that I do like to have my tweezers handy. But again, I like this liquid glue, just any glue that you can easily dot down like this stuff. Make those little tiny dots. It's kind of hard to see there, but they're there and they're tiny and they will hold the centers in place. So, so now I've got the fills in. I'm going to glue some more layers on here, right? I'm going to go ahead, add some more adhesive and build up a little bit more dimension. So let me go spray these, right? Just kind of come in here, hover over. So I just think this is so much easier to do when you start gluing everything together on that shadow base. Look at that. Oh, so much easier to get it lined up, right? Pressing that down. So let's get that lined up there. But again, just easier to do it this way, I think, than because when you've got that shadow layer, right, it just seems to give you more uh, dimension, right? that shadow layer, not dimension, it just gives you more of a base. So happy birthday. Got to decide if I want to do a third, I think I will. As I put the second layer of the inner outlines on, I think to myself, you know what? I think I'm good with two layers. Now, if you want to make it more dramatic, definitely, you know, throw that third layer on, but in the name of expediency, and some would argue there's nothing about this card that's expedient at this point. That's okay, because again, what about the joy in the creative process? Wow, I haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, haven't waxed philosophic about crafting at all in this video, and I'd like to do that right now. So you know how you watch videos, like the one you're watching now, and you think to yourself, I wanna try that, and maybe you try it, and it doesn't turn out the way you'd hoped. I have been there, I am still there sometimes, and I just want you to know, it's okay. It's just paper. It's just paper, and you can start over, and you can try again, and you can do different things. I do that all the time. I don't share all the mishaps, right? But I just want you to embrace the process of creating. I saw a comment on on a on a message board the other day, or you know, on Facebook somewhere, and and someone was pointing out that. She, she realized that the person she sends her cards to just throws them away. And she was really sad about that. Or I think she was sad about that. And I had left a comment, and I really feel this way. You know, you, you can't control what other people are going to do with your creations. It's kind of like scrapbooking, right? When I used to talk about scrapbooking with my friends who didn't scrapbook, they just give me that thousand mile stare like, that's nice, Kathy. So remember, you create and feel joy. If you don't feel joy, start over, do something else. But friends, happy birthday. That's bringing me some joy. And even though in my mind, right, this was going to be much more of a colorful shift, I still think that's pretty. And I still think the technique's doable. So let's prep our card base and continue with our joy. These are big and it could be cool to have this on a five by seven card. But if I'm being honest, I almost never make five by seven cards. Part of the reason is 
I don't have envelopes for that size. I know I could make them, uh, but I, I tend to do the standard USA 2 size, which is five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall because I have envelopes for every last one of them. I'm actually gonna take my other bone folder and just give that a good press down. So that's why I stick to this size. Now, this is popping open, right? Cause it's, you know, 110 pound cardstock. I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna take some purple tape here that I've double backed. I have a am ample stash of this stuff. So I'm never worried that I'm gonna run out. But if I can't keep my card flat, it's hard to photograph it too. And so let me show you how big this is on the panel. <laughs> this is huge, right? That's huge. And that's exactly what I wanted this to be. I wanted this to be an in your face, happy birthday. So what we're gonna do is once I figure out where the center is, I'm gonna pop this up. So let me grab some thin foam squares. Now I don't want the really, oh no, am I out of those? Hmm. All right, I gotta dig through my stash cause I, I, I don't have the proper foam squares. You know what though? Maybe this is where I need to go all in. Forget that, no, thin foam squares are the way to go. Hold that thought. So the more I look at this, I'm about to contradict myself and I'm gonna tell you why. I think that's, I think it's, I think it's competing too much. And I think I need to make a five by seven card because it's so big. Can I do that? Can I change my mind? Well, the answer my friends is yes. So here's how I'm gonna use my score buddy to do a five by seven. I am going to score it at five, right? But not go all the way like that. Flip it and go like this. Now I'm gonna make a five by seven card. And then this video might get entirely too long because I actually have an envelope. What is that, what is that tool called? The one, two, three punch board. And I could make, I could make a five by seven envelope if I really wanted to. I don't know if I want to, but I could. So let's take a look at the difference between, let's get you guys out of the way. Letting something breathe a little. If I do this on a five by seven card, it gets a chance to breathe with white space. Let's flip these guys over and just, just pop a few. I'm gonna put one here and boop. <laughs> And one there too. You know, I just cut my foam squares as needed. I guess I could have used foam tape for this too. My regular foam tape that I use, my Big Mama roll, because honestly, it feels like it's about the same depth. But you know, we're just gonna do this for now. Yep, let's take them off. Take them off. Now I could do the little bit of glue on here. I might do that. I'm gonna take a little bit of Connect glue and I'm just gonna put a few drops on each one because it will give me just a tiny bit of float time before I have to press in case I need to wiggle. Oh my goodness, this is so hard to do because I can't really see. Let's look at the monitor. How about that? I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna place this down. We're visualizing equal space. We're letting go. Get you out of the way for now because the one that I care about the most is this. And now I can just go like that and Commit. I think that's straight, isn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty straight to me. Holding that down and press. And now, let's see, I don't think I'm gonna need to do the uh, foam, or the T-square at the top because really all I have to do is just visualize the top, have it be, I want the base to be mostly like that. How's that look? Pretty good? Let's see. straight on the top. Yeah, that looks good. And the spaces between. Yeah, that's good. All right. Happy birthday. We are nicely adhered on this big old five by seven card. And maybe I should grab some shiny things. All right. I go to this set so often. It's pretty pink posh and uh, it's just a great set. It's just a great mix. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to, um, Let's see, do I want to do this with, with this hand? I think I do. We're just going to go in this, well, you know what? Switch hands. That's what we're going to do, because that's what I want to do. 
And if that's what I want to do, people, that's what we're going to do. So pop you in there. Boop. Pick you up. Pop you over here. And I've just got my cluster of three, right? Cluster of three. Oh, working the way around, actually. Let's get you going. Boop. And release. And three in design. As you know, it is a magic number. It's a totally magic number because it's an odd number. Odd numbers are energizing. That's true. I, uh, I didn't make that up. Nature did. Boop. All right, let's get this poop guy in. One more boop and we'll finish this up. Now, the question is, <laughs> do you want to stick around long enough to see me do a matching envelope? Have to let me know in the comments below because this is getting all together too long but you know if you are hanging out watching this and you're crafting in your craft slash whatever space you have yeah, it could be fun it's like we're hanging out it's like we're hanging out and that there Boop. and the final placement is going here and Boop. and that's it now I think this is fun. Is it me? <laughs> it's a lot to mention, right? If someone gets this card, they're gonna know you mean it. So I'm gonna grab some pattern paper because I'm I got an idea. Got an idea. We got the one, two, three punch board. I have used this once. <laughs> Today's the day we're gonna use it more than once because I can do this. I found a piece of pattern paper. Now it's not gonna the light's getting all wonky here, but on the inside of it, it's got this cool sort of shiny thing that happening, this, uh, oh, what's that called? Spot varnish, <laughs> thank you. And on, the in, on, the, on this side, it's just a nice yellow, which I thought, if you can see these colors together, that would be great for the outside of this envelope. So, all right, five by seven, my paper size needs to be nine and seven eighths square, is that right? Doesn't really matter, I think, which side I do here. So I want to do, nine and seven eighths so go let's see one two three four five six seven and I'm going to go ahead and cut that right and flip it and go right back to nine and seven eighths and let's see and cut I think that is the size that I need. So next I need to extend, oh, listen to that. That sounded weird, the arm, right? And I need to pull out the scoring tool. I need to take, I think I'm scoring, if I'm scoring like this, I actually just gotta double check something. This is, this is me not knowing how the tool works. If I'm going like that and I'm scoring up, that's the way it folds, right? Yeah, okay. Shiny side in. And, and if I screw this up, it's okay, but I have a fun thing I want to show you. So here's the thing. It says, I'm coming back over to the side here, punch guide, four and one eighth, and score line. Which score line though? Is it A or B? I think it's just score line A, envelope score line A. I'm pretty sure it's score line A. Four and one eighth, which is right there. Okay. Where's A again? Oh, A is on the inside. Okay. I promise you, I don't know what I'm doing at all. So let's let's give it a try. Let's uh, let's hold that and just kind of go like that all the way in. Did I just? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! How does Christina Warner know how to do this? I'm trying. I'm trying, Ringo. Okay. I think I'm doing it right. Why does it feel like it wants to jump out? Okay, punch. Oh my gosh. Okay, I guess, I don't know. There, okay, punch and turn. Do I go back to four and one eighth? I don't know. Punch and score. I don't know what I'm doing. Come on, go in there, go in there. Why are you not lining up? Oh my. <laughs> this isn't even close. The 
this isn't even close. Okay, we're gonna pause for a hot minute until we gather ourselves. Okay, read the directions. And I'm sure there are those of you who are like, Kathy, read the directions. I forgot to line up the score lines. So let's try it again. Luckily, I have one piece of this paper left. So I am going to read again. So it's four and one eighth. That's it right there. In fact, maybe grandma, I call myself that with love because I swear my brain, maybe I should just put a piece of tape there so I know what I'm doing. All right. Now, okay. So four and one eighth, you're going to do the score line A, which is this one here. Okay. And I think that where I, where I messed up, yeah, let's just get in here and see. I can feel it. I can feel it. Am I recording? I am recording. Let's feel it. You're going right in like that. Okay. And then you're going to come same thing. Let's try it again. Stay in the groove. Stay in the groove. So that's the groove that I have. And now I'm going to punch. Now when I turn it, I think what I'm supposed to do is line this up in the groove, right? And then do the next one. That's where I screwed up. Okay. Let's keep going. Come up gentle. I almost stopped what I was doing and went to watch Christina Warner because she's my, she's the woman. She's the one who knows. Now this goes right back to Florida and eighth, as you can see that one, right? You could feel it. Okay. This isn't as hard as I thought it was. I, I appreciate your patience. Okay. I'm going to get in there like that. And I don't know if I did do the side that I wanted, but we'll see. Okay. Let's get you lined up in the groove. Can I feel it there? Come on. I'll wait till it lines up. Is that in there? Come on. I need to be in the groove. Didn't Madonna once write a song about that? I believe she did. Get into the groove, boy. You've got to prove your love to me. All right, punch. Now I have the base of my envelope. Okay, so here's the fun part too. And just use, use the corner rounder. And it's a really nice corner rounder, um, which I really appreciate that. In fact, this would just be a great corner rounder for any, anything. Actually, let's, let's do it with my right hand because I am right-handed and that's very awkward. There we go. Punch and <laughs> punch. And now I have, oh, I do, I have my envelope. All right. So now all I'm going to do, and this is exactly what I wanted because I want the shiny to be on the inside because I think that will be pretty. I'm going to press you down like that. And actually, I guess I'll fold you in like that. And of course you can, you know, if you don't have this fancy Teflon bone folder, right? You just use the one that comes with the score tool. But I think the inside, and the reason why I didn't want the shiny on the outside, I'm going to show you something fun at the very end because Lord knows this just couldn't go on long, long enough. Okay. I need this to go to here with the tape. So I'll get my score tape. Okay, and we'll do the same on the other side. Let's put that out here. Let's stick that down. I think that's going to be enough, right? Mm -hmm. Release the backers. And let's bring this up and press. Now I have, oh, look at that. I have the, the core pocket for my 5x7 card that's going to pop right in there. And then when they pull it out, how cute is that? It just has a really nice matchy matchy look for my big card, but let's do something kind of fun because I want to do something for the flaps and I'm, I'm going to show you next. All right. I want to stamp onto the envelope and I want to show you uh, a set that I designed. It's called sassy flaps. The whole idea about this set is just to stick stamp on your envelope, right? Just something sassy for the back. From your crafty AF friend probably is my favorite in the whole thing. I came, I crafted, you're welcome. So there's just a lot of sassy greetings in here. And I think what I'm gonna do, grab the old Misty tool, right? Grab the Misty. 
I could put, if you only knew how many hours went into this, pretty sure you'd think twice about tossing it. So if you're one of those people who have a hard time um, <laughs> with the thought that people are throwing them away, how about it's not how much you spend on the card that matters. Actually, wait, I think it is. Uh, I think that's funny. So all I'm going to do is just pick this up with the misty door. I'll turn it here now so you can so I can ink it up. I'll just use some Simon Intense Black. Boop. Get that inked up like that. And then I get my Debbie tool. What is my Debbie tool? Oh, you're about to see. Is that going to work? Here's my Debbie tool. It's a tool that lets me put pressure on my misty door made by Debbie's husband. Some people call this a Chucky. I call it the Debbie. And now I have this stamp on the back. <laughs> it's not how much you spend on the card that matters. Wait, actually, I think it is. I think I'm going to do germ-free seal 100%. No looking in, or just germ-free seal, no looking involved. You know, have some fun with your flaps. Can go on the front, can go on the back. And again, this uh, this is going a little longer than I thought it was going to go. But I think it's fun to do fun things on the outside too. And of course, I have a cute uh, return address stamp that I'm not going to put on here because it's my P.O. box. Maybe I should get a fancy one for my P.O. box. But now, if you see that, on the front, I have that cute little stamp there. And then on the back, that guy there. So, I don't know. And that's the finished card project. That envelope I threw in at the end, and it was hard. It was hard, but we made it through. So I need to use that tool more often because it's kind of cool. Anyway, all of the products I'm using in this video can be found linked below. And I will see you back here with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.